Please stand. We meet in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, and welcome to our parish mass coming from the United Benefice of Holy Innocence and St. Mark in South Norwood in London. It's great to see those of you who have braved the rain to be here this morning, and welcome to those of you joining us from home. It's October, so it's Black History Month, where we celebrate the contributions of the black community to this land of ours. And so today we're going to have a different preacher for myself and Cicely. So I shall introduce her later. In the meanwhile, as we prepare to receive from God in word and sacrament, let us say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us call to mind and confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. You alone are the only one, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Let us pray our collects for today, the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit as we listen to our readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones, and he planted it with, with choice of vines. He built, <clears throat> he built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do with my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 80, and the response is, The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You, you have brought a vine out of Egypt and cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own 
because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able to receive the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get, get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyards to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his disciples, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit. So each year during Black History Month, you know me hear sermons from the likes of me and or the people who look like me from the minority ethnic population community. So this year, I thought we will have a change to that. And we have someone from the majority ethnic community bringing us the message as we begin Black History Month. So Anne made the mistake of saying to me that she followed my suggestion of reading Ghost Ship that I said to all of you on Emancipation Sunday. That's a good book to read if we want to learn about institutional racism in our church. So Anne has done that. And so be with her and pray with her as she brings us the message that God has laid upon her heart for us this morning. Anne, over to you. Thank you, Mother Roxanne. What an introduction. I, can hope, I hope I can live up to the challenge that she has set for me by giving a sermon at the beginning of Black History Month. Being white, I am delighted to be invited to celebrate Black History Month 
and have been to several events and services at the cathedral and elsewhere over the years. In the gospel reading from Matthew today, we learned that the stone which was rejected was the main cornerstone. This is Jesus, who is our main cornerstone, our foundation, who loves and cares for each and every one of us. No questions or discrimination. As Mother Roxanne mentioned, I have been reading The Ghost Ship, written by ADA France Williams, a priest in the Church of England. The book is about institutional racism and tells harrowing stories about black and ethnic people in the Church of England and the struggles they have faced and are still facing, becoming priests in the country of their birth. For me personally, it was difficult reading. In the middle of the book was a conversation with Rose Hudson Wilkin, a person who I admire and met at Holy Innocence. I have also heard her speak on a couple of occasions. Many of you know that she came from Jamaica and was rejected at first and told she was not good enough. This made her more determined and stronger than ever to succeed, and succeed she indeed has. She was a vicar in Hackney, which overlapped at the time with being one of Her Majesty's chaplains before her role in Parliament as chaplain to the Speaker of the House. Last year, she became the Bishop of Dover, which in Canterbury Province is next down from the Archbishop. Now that we finally have women bishops, wouldn't it be great to have a woman Archbishop? I believe we are fortunate to have Mother Roxanne, a black woman priest, here at the United Benefice of St Mark's and Holy Innocence. I joined St Mark's Mother's Union many years ago and became treasurer and joint branch leader with Norma when the previous leader passed away. I guess when I first started going to the meetings as joint leader, I was a little naive about institutional racism, although I could not fail to see how disproportionate the meetings and services were for an international organization. When Norma and I were nominated to be trustees and vice presidents of the Croydon area, we accepted and became the first joint VPs in the diocese. At the time, there were only two other black trustees on the board. Our first year was difficult as we weren't quite sure what our job actually entailed, but worked as a team and got over the stumbling blocks. I became increasingly aware and noticed at meetings when inappropriate remarks were made. I used to get a nudge from Norma and this happened regularly. We travelled around the area visiting branches when invited, though on some occasions I found that we seemed to have become invisible. In our sixth and last year of office, we not only found a successor for our job, we also asked Comfort if she would consider being the new Darson president. We knew she had a similar position in Nigeria and I'm pleased to say Comfort accepted the position as is a, and is the first black Dyson president in the UK, now in her second year of office. Another celebration is that the Mothers' Union have a new worldwide president, 
Sharon Harper, the first appointed outside of Europe who is black. If her video messages are anything to go by, she will lead the Mother's Union in the right direction. In the world of music and the arts, there is so much to celebrate. I was watching a program the other day about black classical artists, which was really inspirational. There are many things we can celebrate in Black History Month, but many things we cannot. We only have to turn on the news to see the horrific events that are happening in our country. The police need to change their attitude to treat people how they would like to be treated themselves and not judge by the color of their skin. This needs to be done at the highest level and at the beginning with their trainers and supervisors. As mentioned in the book, Ghost Ship, many priests found prejudice with some trainers at their colleges at the very beginning of their priesthood. On a personal note, if everyone showed the kindness and support that was given to me in my recent bereavement by my friends, neighbours, the church family and Mother's Union, I believe the world would be better for it. This year has been difficult for everyone. Our lives have changed dramatically. People are becoming more caring. Wouldn't it be wonderful if this was the beginning? It would be wonderful indeed if it were the beginning, and we pray to God that it is the beginning of things to come. Because as we say every Sunday, we're here to love one another. We love God, we love ourselves, we love one another. And it's by the love we show for each other that people outside of here would know that we are called by the name of Christ. Please stand if you're able as we say together the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel as we pray in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ as we pray to the Father. Dearest Lord, help us to live by your Son's example. Help us to draw closer to Jesus Christ through thoughtful prayer. We place our trust, hope, and faith in you. Hear our prayers. 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you are our creator, and you have called us to know you and proclaim your love. Help us to be aware that you speak to us through the scriptures and through those who tell of your presence and power today. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Strengthen Christopher, Jonathan, Richard, and Carol Way, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for the bishops, priests, and people of the Anglican Church of Tanzania. In the Southwark Diocese, in the Southwark and Newington Deering, we pray for St. Mary Newington, for Giles Fraser, Rector, Mike Todd, Assistant Priest, and Zimbabwean Mothers Union Chapter, Chad Gandili, Chaplain, and for all God's people there. We ask your blessing upon Elizabeth, our Queen, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As the world's corona, coronavirus death tolls across, crosses one million, let us pray for all those that have departed and are now seated in the kingdom of heaven. May they, re, may they enjoy eternal peace. We pray for the families and their loved ones. We pray for families that are separated due to the lockdown restrictions. May they remain hopeful for better days ahead. We pray for all those who work tirelessly in the church to keep the faithful nourished. We thank them for their efforts, time, and resources. We keep them in our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our own community we pray for sensitivity in our dealings with others, that we may be made aware of the needs of those around us. We pray that we may be kept generous and gracious in all our dealings. We pray for our homes and our places of work, for our friends and our loved ones. We pray for this united benefits of St. Mark and Holy Innocence, and especially today for those who live in Belfast Road, Northside, the Barclays 22 to 23 Sunnybank. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for NHS workers as hospitals and GP surgeries struggle to cope with new admissions and the backlog of appointments. We pray that health workers will be restored and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We remember these by name known to us. Helen, Linda, Vera, Enid, Alec, Una, Mick, Jennifer and Reuben, Ted, Wilfred, Claude, Bob, Barry and Elizabeth, Myrna, Evro, Sheila Bradshaw, Holly St. Clair and Julie Emsu. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Father Creator, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, the living Lord, and for the power of his resurrection. We commit to your keeping our loved ones departed, that they may rejoice in the fullness of your kingdom. And we pray that we will share with them in the knowledge of your love. Today, we remember the souls of Laurel Rachel and Maud Helen and Donnell. Rest eternal and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for those who mourn, for Claude and family and Michelle and family. Let us remember their loss and show genuine empathy for their broken hearts. Let us show kindness and compassion to their needs and travel beside them on their journey through grief. In the midst of their deep sorrow, Give them the comfort of your presence 
and the courage and faith they need to face life again in the days to come. And may your peace be with them, O Lord, both now and always. Lord, hear us. Lord, In a moment's silence, let us offer our own prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, cast your love and light upon us, that we may bask in your great glory. Walk beside us as we place you above all else. Amen. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we prepare to share the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs and heiresses of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer in our bubbles one another the sign of peace to the rest of you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Andrew. Peace be with you. Let's just give thanks and ask for your service in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We have this bread to set before you, which I have just given in human hands, that may the blood become for us the bread of life. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. 
therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, our praise, and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary and Saint Joseph, Saint Mark, the Holy Innocents, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Awaiting the promises of Christ, let us pray with confidence in the words that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
So today we're having two stations, both at the back of the church. So on this side, you go over there, and over here, you go over there, okay? Please stand as you're able. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please sit for a minute. It's good to see so many of you out in this weather. Good to see you, Tony. And thanks, Nicole, for reading for us. 
and for Anne for sharing with us what God has laid on your heart. We can show her our appreciation. <laughs> and thank you very much. So today we have a couple of birthdays. It's Peter McGill's birthday. Today, he is 70. And Rose Peck is 90 today. So you don't know Rose, but 70 years ago this year, February, Rose got married at Holy Innocence. But her husband, uh, Bert, sadly passed away almost two years ago. So we say happy birthday to Pete McGill and to Rose Peck. We have no internet, so we can't even give them a round of applause. Well, we could give them a round of applause. I'm sure Josh would. I'm sure Josh could send a recording to them. <laughs> and Malachi, who isn't here, he has voice trials for um, Westminster Abbey Choir on Tuesday. So we pray for him that all will be well. I don't know if you are able to, if you had registered and logged on to the uh, diocesan Thanksgiving day yesterday, but it was very good. Um, my internet kept dropping out, I don't know why, but from what I heard, it was really good. And we continue to pray for those on our sheet. Um, Marcia raised three, Jan, three something for the, um, 350 pounds for Macmillan cake sale. So that's very good. We don't have any more boxes to collect more, do we, Jan? Oh, I see. Now you're depriving me of asking them to pay some more money today. Never mind. <laughs> you can still pay, she says. So thank you for those who um, are paying your tithes by direct debit. Now, those of you who are here from Holy Innocence, you could follow those who are paying direct debit, or you follow Pearl and Run and put your right Holy Innocence on your envelope. It says going to the right church, OK? So either direct debit, standing order, or you when you're here, put your, um, make sure your envelope is the one that says Holy Innocence. And so we will be able to take care of all of that. Any more for any more? Yes. Anne. Yes. Yeah. Right, so those who it's in marks who want to continue the family purse, that's paying your ties by envelope. See Anne afterwards, Cicelyn? Um, if you could mention about the Oh, yes. So next week, as we know, here at St. Mark, after church, we have the annual parochial church meeting. There are forms at the back for those of you who have been coming here for six months, live in the parish, you're baptized, you're a member of the Church of England, and all that stuff, and you haven't yet registered as a member of the church. So there are forms at the back for that. There are forms at the back for those of you who would like to be sites people. Well, we will get the sites people to help Donald and Simon with ushering people to their seat and all that sort of thing. So do, do um, add your names to that. Members of the PCC and the wardens. So Donald is our only warden. So I encourage, you don't have to be a man, OK? You can be a young person over the age of 18, and you could be young, old, well, not old, you know, not so young, white, black, man, woman, whatever, okay? So think about what God is calling you to be or to do as part of your stewardship, part of your discipleship, how God is calling you to serve in this parish. So think about it. The forms are at the back. Talk to Sister if you have any queries, okay? And and take a copy of the booklet so you can read all the reports before next Sunday, okay? And we'll have them online as well. I think that's everything. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, and all those whom you love and pray for, this day and always. Amen. Our Mass is ended, but our service to God continues as we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.